Remember Rugrats, that show on Nickelodeon? What you probably don't know is that the creator of the show originally planned for a late night version of Rugrats called Rug Rascals to be played at night with a bit more adult humor. Because every major channel thought that the pilot was too disturbing, they refused it to air it on the show, and as a result, no one really heard about it. However, one nation in Wellington, New Zealand mistakenly played it in the morning, thinking it was a regular Rugrats episode. The pilot and only episode of that show was seen, and was called Chucky's Mom. The intro played like normal, but at the end, when Tommy shoots the milk at the screen, the sound effect is much louder, and the milk stays on for about 10 seconds longer. Then the name of the episode appears. The episode is played out like normal, with the babies playing in the playpen, and they're all talking about their moms when Chucky has a flashback. It had Chucky in a hospital standing next to his mother who was in a bed. She looked like she was dying from an unknown illness, and she was singing, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine, to Chucky in a very weak voice, as if she was about to die. But when she sang the second verse, the song started sounding distorted, weird, and started playing in reverse itself. Keys would play off-tune and off-melody. A shot of Chucky appeared of him looking at a live-action chicken whose head had just been cut off to show the audience the severity of the situation. Then it suddenly changed back to its mother, petting Chucky's hair. The scene zooms in at her hand, slowly dropping down to the bedside. Chucky starts whimpering quietly as his mother, with an almost silent voice, says, Don't worry, Chucky. It's time for me to move on. A flurry of live-action clips were shown at that point, said to represent death by the audience who watched it. One showing a decapitated chicken from earlier running around with blood gushing from its neck, another of a man being mutilated, then a real-life child that looks almost exactly like a live-action version of Chucky. She is someone laughing with an audible sound, and it's looking like he is on the top of them. Now, the cameraman looks like he's on top of the child, and it's zooming down, and then, frame by frame, this starts moving slower and slower. The child's stomach is shown being cut open as audible sounds of the stomach opening and screaming and horrifying sound just coming from the child. A shot of Chucky Mom appears again. This time her eyes are closed, sunken in. Heart monitors flatlying, her father saying, Do you remember where it all started? Then, it cuts the live-action footage of childbirth sonograms. After about one minute of these sonograms, you hear Chucky's father say, I'm so sorry. He starts crying and crying for about three minutes straight, with no stop in the camera slowly panning out. <sighs> At this time, you see Chucky come out with a flashback, having a seizure. Tommy and Philly and Lil are crying. An ambulance worker calms them down and keeps on saying, Chucky, Chucky, can you hear me? In a stern voice. Eventually, after coughing up some blood and vomiting, Chucky comes to his senses, and we see the point of view from Chucky seeing Tommy and Lily and the ambulance worker. His face has a confused look on it as he asks Tommy what happened. Tommy starts talking in his mother's weak voice. Chucky starts going into seizure again, and then the screen cuts black. Next, you see the ambulance worker talking to Chucky's dad. The man tells him that Chucky has the same illness as his mother did, and has roughly one year to live. You see a flashback come back to Chucky's dad crying and crying as the screen fades black again. After this, the regular credits played. Then suddenly, it started at the 15-minute show all over again. Surprisingly, although this episode was watched by mainly children, only like one adult who is watching, mainly me, has spoken about it until now. It's unfortunate to find out that children's suicide rates went through the roof in New Zealand after that year. Well, that was Chucky's mom, everyone. Um, uh, there's some things I liked and there's some things I definitely disliked. If you take a look at the story itself, it's kind of cliche with the uh, flat out ripping off um, Squidward Suicide and you know with the kid getting his guts torn out slowly frame by frame and some of the other flat out weird imagery. However, besides that cliche right there, 
I would have to say that this is pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. I would probably give it a 8 out of 10. And the uh, subtle way of saying that Chucky died by having it fade to his dad crying, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Very good touch, I'd have to say. This is actually the revised version as of late. So, I can't really tell you how old this pasta is, but I actually believe that this is one of the more classic ones, and has topped many people's top lists, as well as ours. So, yeah, I guess, uh, it's, it's a pretty good story. I enjoyed a lot of the imagery that's in it. It's flat out disturbing. The only thing I disliked was some of the cliches it used, or maybe even started. Also, take note that my Patreon is in the link in the description below. You should check it out. You get a, if you donate like a dollar a month, you get to see my videos early and have all the download links for them via Dropbox. Also, my art, do, my artist does commissions for other people, so hey, there's that too. Check her page out in the link in the description below. This has been That Creepy Reading and reminding you to sit back, relax, and prepare to be scared.